When I was forced to the rooftop by the debt collectors, Estelle was having her wedding with Anthony. For seven years, she pretended to love me, all for Anthony, stealing my company's trade secrets for him. I asked her why she did it, and she said that she had fallen in love with Anthony the moment he rescued her from the car accident years ago, but it was me who saved her. Anthony, my so-called best friend, knew this full well but still took all the credit. Reborn on the day she confessed her love to me, this time, I publicly rejected her, leaving her humiliated. She cried and asked me why. I looked down at her and said slowly, because you're not worthy. Chapter 1. I was reborn on the day Estelle confessed her love to me, a day when I returned to my school as an outstanding alumnus to give a speech. After the presentation, she stood in the audience with a gentle smile, saying, Simon, I hope you'll be in my future. Everyone present knew that I would agree. Before this moment, we were already recognized by everyone as a couple. This confession was just a formality. Part of the reason I came back to school this time was because of her. In my previous life, I had set up a scholarship for the school named Starlight. After her, according to the original course of events, she was about to graduate from her master's program and become my girlfriend before joining Wong Corporation. But this time, amidst the cheers of the crowd, I rejected her. Miss Lu, I may have treated you a bit too kindly, but I think you misunderstood. At those words, her face turned deathly pale, and she froze on the spot, seemingly unable to believe those words came from my mouth. I stepped away as whispers erupted around me, so CEO Wang doesn't actually like her. It was just Estelle throwing herself at him. How embarrassing. In my previous life, I treated her too well. I accepted her confession back then and even scolded her, thinking that such things should be initiated by a man. How could she have confessed first? But she had said she wanted me to know her feelings. At the time, I was lost in the happiness of it all. Who confessed first didn't matter. To others, our relationship had always been obvious and unspoken. Little did I know, it was all orchestrated by Anthony. What I thought was a sincere confession had ulterior motives. After graduating, I took over Wong Corporation and became the pride of the business world. No one understood why I showed her such favoritism. I pitied her for the hardships she had faced, but that compassion was used by her as a tool. She was only brought back to the Liu family at the age of 18. She had been lost as a child, gone for over a decade. By the time she returned, her family already had another daughter. Luna. Luna. The pampered princess, looked down on Estelle, making things difficult for her at every turn. At a birthday banquet, Luna orchestrated a grand celebration, only to humiliate Estelle by forcing her to play a piano piece in front of the guests. Foremost, this was a simple request, but Estelle had never touched a piano before being brought back to the Lu family. Luna's so-called friends seized the moment to mock Estelle. She clenched her sleeves, humiliated beyond words. Amid the chaos, she knocked over the cake and fell into it. Her hair. Dress and even her face covered in cream, a picture of utter disgrace. In that moment of absolute embarrassment, surrounded by whispers, it was I who took out a handkerchief and gently wiped her face, draped my coat over her shoulders, and led her away from the crowd. She thought that was our first meeting, but it wasn't. I had seen her long before that, on her way back to the Lu family. That car accident, she was unconscious, and I was the one who got her to the hospital. But when she woke up, the first person she saw was Anthony. Chapter 2 as my car drove away from the school, I knew that Estelle's public rejection would soon spread online. She would become a laughingstock at Southern University, subjected to the judgmental stares of everyone around her. Though she had six months left until graduation, those months would be filled with nothing but misery. Online discussions were already buzzing. Southern University's beauty confesses to business tycoon and gets brutally rejected. Her love was misplaced, she was just being delusional. CEO Wang ruthlessly turns down campus beauty's love confession. Unsurprisingly, these headlines became trending topics on the internet. While I sipped red wine and gazed at the city's night skyline from Xianglin High, Anthony burst in. In Southern City's business world, everyone knew that the Yi family always fell short of the Wang family, that was an unspoken fact. The Yi family had treated the Wang family with nothing but respect for years, and Anthony and I had been close friends for just as long. In my previous life, I never doubted him. He stormed in, confusion written all over his face, and questioned me, Simon. Why are you playing with Estelle like this? You obviously like her, but you humiliated her in public, crushing her pride. What are you up to? This was the largest and most exclusive club in the city. From here, you could overlook the entire city. Maybe what Anthony really wanted was to stand in my place right now. I put down my wine glass, glancing at him casually. Anthony, if you had to choose, would you want to be in my position right now or have Estelle? The moment I finished speaking, he froze on the spot. After a pause. His expression changed. Gone was his earlier aggressiveness, replaced by an awkward grin. He cautiously responded, Simon, what are you talking about? Estelle likes you, 
and you like her. I just hope you two can be together. As for your position, I couldn't care less. I just want to be a race car driver, free from my family's control. I have no interest in the family business. I chuckled softly. He had said the same thing in my previous life. We met on the racetrack, our relationship beginning with rivalry, only to later develop a mutual respect. But from the moment his car passed mine on the track, that was the start of his conspiracy. He had deliberately orchestrated our encounters. He always portrayed himself as someone passionate about racing, eager to break free from his family's grasp, showing no ambition for business. I treated him sincerely, never realizing I was nurturing a snake in my midst. I smiled at him, noticing the flicker of uncertainty in his eyes. Anthony, you like Estelle, I said, my voice calm but firm. That simple statement made his face change. My tone wasn't questioning, it was a declaration. He quickly shifted the conversation, attempting to tease me. You've been acting strange today. Simon, you're hard to read, Estelle likes you, she's yours, we all know that, there's no need to test anyone, just go find her tomorrow and clear up this misunderstanding, tell her you were just nervous and said something wrong in the heat of the moment, just like in my previous life, he played the role of mediator, always stepping in to smooth things over between me and Estelle, I had never suspected that he had feelings for her, looking back, his resolve was terrifying, for his own agenda, he stayed by my side, playing the loyal friend, even pushing the woman he loved towards me, just to watch us together, seemingly happy and in love, I handed him a glass of wine, staring at him with a faint smile, Estelle cried in your arms, didn't she? Chapter 3, the sound of the glass shattering on the floor was piercing, Anthony froze, his face filled with confusion and panic, he couldn't understand why I would say such a thing, I scoffed, maybe you were too flustered to notice, but there's lipstick on your shirt, and you still smell like her perfume, it's a fragrance I bought for her, called, Chance Encounter, at this, Anthony stammered in response, Simon, don't misunderstand, she was upset after you rejected her in public, everyone at school is mocking her, and she was feeling lost, that's why she came to me, to ask what happened, she doesn't understand why you did it, I just tried to comfort her a little, it's not what you think, I turned away, no longer interested in his weak excuses, in my previous life, he had stood in this very spot, holding Estelle in his arms, mocking me, he had said, what you were born with, I spent 30 years trying to take, no one could have guessed that he was the illegitimate son of the E family, secretly brought back by the patriarch. His mother never had a name, a fact he tried desperately to bury. No wonder the lady of the E family despised him in my previous life. He wanted to be a figure of power in Southern City, someone whose mere presence commanded respect. But in this life, his ambition would never be realized. Sensing my cold indifference, Anthony could only slink away in defeat. I watched the shattered pieces of the wine glass on the floor and crushed them further under my foot. The next day, on my way to the company, someone suddenly jumped in front of the car, blocking our path. The driver slammed on the brakes, managing to stop just in time, though still knocking her down. Sure enough, it was her, Estelle. Was she being impatient? Or had Anthony sent her? As the driver helped her up, I watched coldly. She rushed toward me, clutching my sleeve with tears streaming down her face. In the past, I could never stand to see her cry or suffer. Her delicate beauty always stirred compassion in me. Simon, did I do something wrong? I went to your house last night, but your mother said you didn't want to see me. I pried her hands off my sleeve and straightened it, smiling faintly. I'm helping you and Anthony. You two are the ones meant for each other. It was me who couldn't see that before. She shook her head in a panic, instinctively denying it. No, that's not true. You're the only one I've ever loved. But I remembered how she had stood beside Anthony, coldly declaring. Simon, every day I spent by your side filled me with disgust. From the beginning, I only loved the men who saved me. When my life was hanging by a thread. He was like a god, giving me hope. That man, was Anthony. It was never you. Chapter 4. Isn't that enough? I tossed a card her way, instructing the driver to take her to the hospital. She always presented herself as someone above material wealth, with her lofty, proud demeanor, disdaining money and luxury. But I wanted to humiliate her with money. Estelle, you're clinging to me for money, aren't you? Well, here's the money. Take it and get far away from me. Don't ever let me see you again. The way I looked at her now was filled only with contempt. Unable to handle how I was treating her, she ran off in tears. This scene was soon captured by someone and spread all over the school's gossip forums. Estelle, once the campus goddess, was now known as the woman shamelessly clinging to a business tycoon. The rumors became increasingly vile, with some even suggesting that our relationship was nothing more than a money-for-sex transaction. Unable to stand the scrutiny at school, she had no choice but to move back home temporarily. But the Lu household wasn't exactly a place of refuge. Luna with her spoiled temper, could never tolerate Estelle. The next time I saw her was at Luna's brother Marco's wedding. The banquet was held at Century Mansion, and Estelle followed cautiously behind Luna, who, 
By contrast, carried herself with grace and confidence. It was no secret that the Lu family elders didn't favor Estelle. Back then, they knew I had some affection for her, and the elders were happy to let it be, hoping a marriage between the two families would be mutually beneficial. They had always wanted Luna to marry me, but I, of course, liked Estelle, the one who had returned to the family after so many years. In front of everyone, Estelle deliberately tried to cozy up to me, attempting to prove that the rumors online were nothing but lies, trying to salvage her reputation and make it seem like our relationship was as strong as ever. But when she leaned in and tried to take my arm, I took a step back. That single step drew a clear line between us. In my previous life, Estelle never quite fit into the world of high society, but I guided her, helping her step by step until she became a proper Lu family lady and the future Mrs. Wong. But in this life, she'd have to walk the path on her own. Her face filled with embarrassment, while Luna, on the other hand, watched with amused curiosity, clearly entertained by the shift in dynamics. When we were away from the elders, Luna nudged my arm, teasing, blind for so long, but finally you can see clearly that pristine little white lotus, how did you manage to dote on her for so long? Our glasses clinked, and we exchanged a smile. In the past, I misjudged people, unlike you, Miss Lu. She didn't like being called Miss Lu the second. Before Estelle came back, Luna was the only daughter of the Lu family, their sole princess. Luna deliberately leaned against my shoulder, whispering in my ear. To others, this might have seemed overly intimate, but I didn't shy away from slipping my arm around her waist. Miss Lu, care to dance, stop it, Luna. Estelle's furious shout interrupted our conversation. She looked at us with rage, as if we had done something unforgivable. I ignored the hurt and disappointment on her face and led Luna to the center of the dance floor. The music started, and Luna and I danced gracefully, all while feeling a pair of hateful eyes glaring at us from the distance. When the dance ended, Estelle blocked my path, tears streaming down her face. Why are you doing this to me? I raised my hand to wipe her tears, just as I used to, but now there was no trace of love or tenderness in my heart. Chapter 5. I don't like you. In fact, I despise you. I said mercilessly. She froze, standing there in shock. At this moment, she wasn't truly heartbroken. It was just her pride at play. In my past life, she had told me, the Lu family wanted Luna to marry you. So of course, I had to steal you from her, just so she could taste the bitterness of defeat. I was nothing more than her trophy, a tool for her to please Anthony. I brushed past her without looking back, unwilling to get entangled with her any longer. As the banquet neared its end, she linked arms with Anthony and approached me, her eyes filled with defiance. Simon, you're so arrogant. Did you really think I've been chasing after you all these years because I loved you? You're wrong. The one I've always loved is Anthony, the man who saved me from that car accident. It's never been you. Everything I did around you was just for show. Don't take it seriously. She said it all in one breath, and Anthony didn't even have time to stop her. I knew her mind well. At school, she had always been the adored goddess, but in the past few months, she had been completely humiliated by me and that had caused her to lose her composure. Now, she was declaring war on me, trying to salvage her fragile pride. I lifted my gaze to Anthony. Estelle loved him so much that even now, she couldn't bring herself to reveal how he had orchestrated everything. I asked her, the man you love is the one who saved you at the car accident scene. Though I asked Estelle, my eyes were fixed on Anthony. I saw the flicker of fear in his eyes. Estelle nodded. Yes, I love him. She answered. Her response was a deadly blow, though not to me. It was true that when she woke up in the hospital, the first person she saw was Anthony, but that was because he had stolen the credit. I had never hidden the truth from Anthony. From start to finish, he knew the truth, but in my previous life, he had intentionally taken credit for the rescue, using Estelle to get close to me and steal Wong Corporation's secrets. I looked at Estelle and said slowly, that day, when you were unconscious from the accident, you broke the bracelet of the person who saved you. That bracelet holds a secret. Perhaps you should go back and take a closer look at the letters engraved on it and figure out what they mean. Anthony's face turned pale, panic flashing in his eyes. In my previous life, he had taken credit for everything, and she had believed him. And in the end, when I saw Estelle holding that bracelet, I had thought she had finally realized it was me. But it turned out to be a mistake from beginning to end. She had seen Anthony and assumed that the bracelet belonged to him. And Anthony, knowing full well it was mine had claimed it was his. He got close to Estelle, knowing her affection would grow, and guided her to love him. By the time I stepped in, it was already too late. Fate truly depends on timing. Estelle and I had missed our perfect moment. When I saw her again, her heart was already full of Anthony. Now, her eyes were filled with confusion. What do you mean? How do you know about the bracelet? How do I know? I laughed mockingly. There was nothing but sarcasm in my question, because that bracelet was mine, and the letters engraved on it were my initials but she was so easy to deceive. Anthony stole the credit, 
and she believed him completely, ridiculous, but I no longer wanted to tell her the truth outright, I wanted her to suffer, to figure it out piece by piece, to learn the truth and regret it, I wanted to see Anthony's panic, his fear and anxiety, I left the banquet, chapter 6, Luna mentioned she wanted to enter the entertainment industry, dreaming of becoming a big star, but her family didn't support her, I chuckled, that's a small matter, I can set up an entertainment company just for you, we'll sign only you, pave your way, and make you a top star, Luna raised an eyebrow, why are you helping me, running my hand through her hair, I replied slowly, because, it'll make things difficult for her, Luna knew exactly who I was referring to, but she didn't ask further, it was a mutually beneficial arrangement, each getting what they needed, Estelle despised Luna, in my previous life, she went to great lengths to win my affection, all just to make Luna's life harder, this time, I was determined to raise Luna to the top, let her shine as brightly as the stars, while Estelle could only watch from the shadows, never able to surpass her, in my previous life, I gave Estelle everything, made her a goddess in everyone's eyes, in this life, I would make her crawl like a rat in the gutter, I set up a subsidiary under Wong Corporation, naming it Luminous Century, with Luna as its sole artist, I spared no expense, assembling a top-tier management team and securing the best resources for her, when Luna debuted, billboards covering the entire city of Haiching were filled with her image, her beauty stirred quite a buzz on the internet, she quickly landed roles in three films, all of which I invested in, right from the start, she was cast as the lead in all three, sparking wild speculation about who her mysterious benefactor was, until Estelle stormed into the main residence, angrily confronting me, Simon, is Luna's benefactor you? I stepped out of the bath, accepting the glass of red wine handed to me, and slowly sipped it, casting a glance at her disheveled appearance, so what if it is, I replied with a smile, her anger had reached its peak, I knew her well, I continued, I am her benefactor, willing to spend whatever it takes to make her smile and pave her way to stardom, I deliberately provoked her, savoring her breakdown, Estelle couldn't hold back her tears any longer, and they began to stream down her face, behind her stood Anthony, but judging by their expressions, they had just had a fight, she bit her lip and said, Simon, I know the truth now, it was you who saved me back then, he deceived me, she cried pitifully, truly the picture of sorrow, I responded, didn't you enjoy being by my side these past years, Estelle, I stepped closer, backing her into a corner, lifting her chin with my hand, her eyes shimmered with tears, but she instinctively looked to Anthony for help, that reaction, that was the most telling of all, it was clear to me now, what I had missed before, the subtle looks they exchanged, I glanced at Anthony, my tone challenging, what's the matter, you want to stay and watch what happens next, Anthony clenched his fists, ready to step forward, but Estelle shouted sharply, Anthony, you're nothing but a complete liar, get out, I never want to see you again, Anthony stood there, wounded, his manipulation of her was real, but so were his feelings, I tilted Estelle's chin and let my hand slide to her waist, and she offered no resistance, as if willing to give herself to me, when I looked back at Anthony, his eyes were red with rage, filled with deep resentment and bitterness, chapter 7, Anthony and everyone else left, leaving just Estelle and me in the room, my gaze occasionally fell on her, she wore a black spaghetti strap dress today, with the straps tied into bows on her shoulders, I slowly untied one of the bows and kissed her shoulder, startled, she took a few steps back, I laughed softly, what, you don't want this, in my previous life, she had always pretended to be innocent in front of me, constantly pushing me away, claiming she wanted to wait until after marriage, but she had secretly gone on a vacation with Anthony to an island, where everything that should and shouldn't have happened, happened, now, watching her act again, it only disgusted me, I shrugged nonchalantly, it doesn't matter if you don't want to, I never force anyone, I turned to leave, but she suddenly clung to my waist, her tear-filled eyes pleading as she said, I want to, she slowly removed her dress, but I only scoffed, so much for the pure campus goddess, it finally dawned on her that I had no real interest in her, I was only humiliating her, my gaze toward her was filled with nothing but mockery and scorn, Estelle, did you really think using your beauty would work on me, I'm never short of beautiful women, she froze at those words, I continued, now, even if you throw yourself at me, I don't want you, I spoke without a shred of mercy, her eyes filled with shame and anger, and through her tears, she asked, Simon, how can you treat me like this, compared to what she did in our past life, this was nothing, I picked up her discarded dress, my voice cold, it's dirty, have the housekeeper bring you a new one, without hesitation, I tossed the dress into the trash, she didn't understand what I was doing, when the housekeeper brought a new dress, I handed it to her, she put it on mechanically, her face still streaked with tears, the new dress hugged her figure even more, but unfortunately, 
It also made the kiss marks on her shoulders even more obvious. They stood out sharply. Night had fallen, and the street lights outside were already on. But under one of those dim lights, someone was waiting for her. Wearing my bathrobe, I escorted her out of the Wang mansion. Sure enough, Anthony was still waiting outside. Seeing us together, his anger flared, and he lunged at me. But the security guards quickly threw him out. He misunderstood. I wanted him to misunderstand. His voice was filled with bitter frustration as he looked at Estelle. Have you fallen so low? Are you really trading your body just to earn his forgiveness? Having just been humiliated by me, and now being shamed by Anthony, her tears flowed uncontrollably, but she seemed determined to hurt Anthony even more as she said, Yes, I am willing to sleep with him if it weren't for you deceiving me, claiming you were the one who saved me. Do you think I'd ever have looked at you? The one I care about has always been him, not you. You're a liar and a thief. Whatever you stole will never last. Anthony raised his hand as if to comfort her, but she slapped it away. Her hatred for him left him standing there, stunned. Mr. Wu, take Miss Lu home, I said casually, breaking the tense silence. She got into the car without looking back and left. Now, it was just Anthony and me. We still had some scores to settle. Chapter 8. I leaned against the stone platform, slowly lighting a cigarette. She got one thing right, what's stolen and deceived into existence is never meant to last. Lies are like paper, easily torn apart. I treated you like a brother, told you everything, but you used that information to lie to her to manipulate her, you're despicable, and I was a fool to ever trust you, he slowly lifted his head, gone was the cheerful boy who used to follow behind me, replaced by a brooding man full of resentment, his voice was cold as he responded, lies, what lies, my feelings for her were real, I've liked her for a long time, it's ridiculous, your whole life, you've had everything you wanted, success, wealth, status, even love, and me, I was always your shadow, why, do you know how it felt when I realized the girl I'd loved for years? the one I'd searched for, was actually in love with you all along, so I told her I was the one who saved her, she hesitated at first, but in the end, she chose me, every time I saw her pretending to be with you, while secretly loving me, I was proud, the woman you love, she loves me, on that island vacation, I had her completely, and you were left to pick up my scraps, he thought those words would provoke me, but I remained calm from start to finish, all I did was let out a cold laugh before turning and heading back into the mansion, the door slowly closed behind me, leaving him standing alone under the streetlight, his figure looking even more forlorn. Tonight was likely his last moment of peace. Meanwhile, Luna's career was soaring. The films she starred in were hits nationwide, and she had become one of the hottest new actresses. At Wong Corporation's annual gala, she attended as my date, a spot that had once belonged to Estelle. But now, Estelle was stuck outside the venue. She wore a couture gown I had given her long ago, but now she stood humiliated, blocked at the entrance. Miss, without an invitation you can't enter, I'm Wang's girlfriend, don't you recognize me, the commotion at the door caught our attention, Luna and I turned to look, and Luna leaned in, whispering in my ear with a smirk, I'll take care of her for you, she insisted on holding my arm as we approached Estelle, glancing her over, Luna deliberately said, that gown is outdated, just like you, the new rise while the old fall, why not keep a little dignity, with that, Luna pressed a kiss to my cheek, a gesture captured by the surrounding reporters, eager to snap a headline worthy moment, this scene was exactly what Luna and I had hoped for. Her popularity would bring more exposure to Wong Corporation. While my backing would shield her from any challenges in the entertainment industry, Estelle's gaze froze as she watched. She was pushed aside by the reporters, who scrambled to ask her, Miss, after being rejected by Mr. Wong, why won't you give up? Isn't he clearly in love with your sister? Are you trying to come between them? Each question was more pointed than the last, leaving Estelle overwhelmed, panic written all over her face. The reporters quickly turned their attention to Luna and me. Mr. Wong, you and Miss Lu are a perfect match, publicly showing your affection. Are wedding bells on the horizon? Luna smiled, replying. You'd have to ask Mr. Wong about that. I offered a noncommittal smile. When the time comes, I'll let the media know. Luna and I shared a knowing look, but Estelle couldn't bear the sight any longer. She fled in embarrassment. Chapter 9 Anthony had been kicked out of the E family, just as pitiful as when he had been brought into it. He had always flaunted the image of a rich young master, but what he never dared mention was that he was the illegitimate son, reluctantly brought back into the family. The true heir of the E family was his half-brother, Domingo. All these years, Anthony had played the part of a carefree playboy, devoid of ambition, which was why his brother let him be, turning a blind eye to his antics. But behind the scenes, Anthony had been secretly plotting, making deals with the board members, planning to one day overthrow his brother. It was all underhanded impossible to keep hidden forever. In the past, Domingo never considered Anthony a threat. I was the one who warned him that his little brother was playing a long game, 
This time around, Anthony exposed himself too soon, leaving him with no chance of recovery, without enough power. He was easily crushed. Domingo had no tolerance for him. When I saw him, he was like a beaten dog, and my car passed him by without even a second glance. After graduating, Estelle also struggled at every turn without Wong Corporation's support. Her path was far more difficult than she had ever imagined. In the past, she had been welcomed everywhere, treated like royalty, but that was only because I stood behind her. Now, without me, she was just like any other graduate, having to prove her worth from the ground up. This journey was much harder than she could have anticipated. The Lu family, once prosperous, had long since fallen from grace. They had some ties to Wang Corporation, but not enough to be of any help to her. Within her own family, she was practically invisible, treated like she didn't exist. Everything she had once taken for granted had been because of me, and she had never appreciated it. While she was out searching for a job, I was at an auction, buying a necklace worth 30 million as a gift for Luna in celebration of her Best Actress Award. As I left the auction, I spotted Estelle sitting on a park bench with her resume in hand. Lost in thought, she kept refreshing her phone, and the screen was filled with images of me presenting the necklace to Luna. Over and over, she refreshed the page, seeing the same news again and again. I stood behind her and spoke at just the right moment. You didn't appreciate what you had before. Now that it's gone, regret won't do you any good. Her eyes filled with confusion and frustration. Why? Why did you suddenly change? Did Luna do something to seduce you? Did you forget what happened between you and Anthony in the Maldives? I unlocked my phone and showed her the indecent pictures that had been sent to me. She froze in shock. You were spying on me. You think too highly of yourself. Someone brought these to me, hoping to make some money. The fear in her eyes was undeniable as she asked. Who? You should be able to guess, I said indifferently. Anthony. She had already answered her own question. Yes, the man who once claimed to love her so deeply, had now betrayed her when he had nowhere else to turn. He sold her out for money. Domingo had decided to destroy Anthony completely. By the time Anthony left the E family, he had lost everything. His assets seized. Anthony thought I still cared about Estelle, that I was just playing a game with her, but he was wrong. I offered her one final piece of advice. Once he realizes those photos can't be used to blackmail me, he'll try to use them on someone else. As soon as I finished speaking, Estelle's phone lit up with notifications. Her hands trembled as she opened the messages, revealing the same photos I had just shown her. The images shattered whatever resolve she had left. Back in the Maldives, Anthony had secretly taken those pictures. In our previous life, he had only used them to provoke me. This time, they served a new purpose. The voice message came through clearly, gather 10 million or these photos will be sent to everyone in your social circle. I want everyone to see the real side of this so-called pure campus goddess. I heard it just as clearly as she did. Estelle's panicked gaze turned to me. Simon, please, you're the only one who can save me. He wants to destroy me. She fell to her knees, pleading at my feet. Chapter 10. Perhaps if she hadn't been driven to the edge, she would never have seen people's true nature. When I loved her with all my heart, she trampled all over it. Now that I despised her, she came back begging for my mercy. But why would I? of all people, show her any kindness. She knelt before me on the gravel path, her knees scraped and bloodied. I spoke coldly, why should I save you? Clutching the hem of my pants, she pleaded desperately, Simon, you saved me once, why can't you save me again? Will you just stand by and watch him destroy me? I know you're not that kind of person, Simon. I chuckled and replied, I am exactly that kind of person. Letting him ruin you suits me just fine. Saving you back then was a mistake and I won't make the same mistake twice. Even if he doesn't finish you off, I will see to it that your name is ruined. When she tried to cling to me again, I kicked her hand away and walked off without a second glance. The Lu family no longer had the influence it once did, and they didn't care about her enough to give her a million dollars for no clear reason. She was destined to come up empty-handed, trapped by her own decisions. Her desperate situation was a result of her own making. I no longer cared about her fate. Meanwhile, Wang Corporation was flourishing and I had been selected as one of the top 10 outstanding young entrepreneurs. On the day of the award ceremony, I proposed to Luna, an outstanding entrepreneur and a famous actress, it was bound to make headlines. We were a power couple, strong together. As for love, perhaps it wasn't necessary. That same day, another piece of news broke. A young woman had crashed her car late at night, killing a man. It was a case of mutual destruction, the final result of Anthony being pushed too far. Estelle had tried to end the nightmare with a car crash. Anthony died in the crash, but Estelle didn't. She was gravely injured and unconscious, and when she finally woke, she insisted on seeing me. She told me she had dreamed of a life completely different from the one she was living now. In the dream, she had married me, becoming the wife of Wang Corporation's CEO, receiving love, wealth, honor, and status. But she had trusted the wrong person. 
betrayed me, and in the end, caused my death, as she spoke. Tears of regret streamed down her face. Simon, I'm sorry. In that moment, she finally understood what she had lost, but I no longer had any feelings, love or hate, toward her. I replied coldly, that wasn't a dream. I'm so sorry. I trusted the wrong person, I thought. I thought the one who saved me was him, but it was always you. You were the one who shielded me from danger, who saved me when I was in peril. It was you all along. Chapter 11. In the past, I thought I would relish the sight of her regret. I thought it would bring me satisfaction, but all I felt was a sense of release. I'm marrying Luna, I said. The moment she heard those words, she gripped the sheets tightly, sobbing uncontrollably, as if her heart were being torn apart. I left the hospital. After today, there would be no more ties between us. The police investigation confirmed that the car accident wasn't just an accident, it had been planned. Estelle was taken into custody and would have to pay for her actions. Luna and I held our wedding in Bali. It was a beautiful seaside ceremony, exactly the kind of dream wedding she had always wanted. And I made sure to fulfill every one of her wishes. As we exchanged rings, she leaned in and whispered in my ear, Mr. Wong, I had my eye on you. Many, many years ago, I froze in place for a moment, suddenly understanding the source of many of her past conflicts with Estelle. Perhaps Estelle had known all along about her little secret. Smiling, I slid the ring onto her finger. The past is irrelevant. Only the future matters. We exchanged a smile, and in front of everyone, we kissed.